Hi everybody. In this video we want to have a look at the phonemic chart. Now you can see the phonemic chart in front of you here. It is a chart containing symbols, each representing a sound in English. There are in total 44 sounds and in this video I will show you how the chart is organized so that you can learn the different sounds very quickly. It's not difficult, I promise. Now, first of all, we can draw a line through the chart and half it into two halves. The top half shows the vowel sounds and there are 20 in total. And in the bottom half, you can see the consonant sounds and there are 24. So we have a few more consonants than vowel sounds. And we're going to have a look at both of these sections in detail. Let's focus on the vowel sounds first, the top half. So we said in total that there were 20 vowel sounds and we can separate all 20 vowel sounds into another two sections. The first section are the single vowel sounds or monophthongs and there are 12 in total. And on the right hand side you can see the double vowel sounds and those are diphthongs okay and there are eight in total and they're basically a combination of the individual vowel sounds so 12 monophthongs single vowel sounds and eight diphthongs double vowel sounds and they make 20 in total so here you can see that a little bit clearer the blue section shows the monophthongs the single vowel sounds the red section shows the double vowel sounds, the diphthongs, and at the bottom, the green sections, is for the consonant sounds. So I want us to have a look at the monophthongs first, the single vowel sounds. Now you can see that they are really um, organized into two groups. Some of the vowel sounds are long sounds, and you can see that because they have something that looks like a colon next to them. Um, the two dots, that means this is a long sound. And then others do not have this symbol and that means they are short vowel sounds, okay? And I've given you an example here. The long one is E, it's a long E sound and then there's a short sound, E. Eh. I'm going to read them all out in a line. So we're going to start with E, I, O, U. This is a long one, then we have Eh. And then in the middle, I'm just going to show you that with my cursor, the next sound is an uh, this is a schwa, that central vowel sound, very important sound. Then we have ö uh and o, oh, two long sounds, and in the bottom row we have eh, ah, ah, and o. Oh. And if you want to learn a little bit more about those, you can watch one of my other videos, which I will link to in the description box below. Let's have a look at the diphthongs next, the next section, the double vowel sounds. Now, although we use two symbols to describe each diphthong, they are still classified as one sound, but it is also a long sound. This is important for spelling rules and other things when you dig a little bit deeper into English phonology. Let's read over those. First line, ear, a, Second line, ur, oi, o, and the third line, er, i, ow. Now, last but not least, let's have a look at the consonant sounds in the bottom half. Now, we have three rows full of consonant sounds, and you can see that I put some of those in yellow and some of those in green. The yellow ones are all the sounds that are unvoiced consonants. Unvoiced means that we do not use our vocal cords to produce those sounds. We have, for example, p, f, t. And you can see already that they are a lot quieter than the counterparts, which are the voiced consonants where we use our vocal cords. For example, b, d, v. They naturally are a lot louder because the vocal cords add a lot of volume to the sound. Now, 
we did not speak about voiced or unvoiced with the vowel sounds and that is because all vowel sounds are always voiced. You cannot say a vowel sound without using your vocal cords. It's impossible. But with consonants, there is a group for unvoiced consonants and voiced. Now, um, we're going to go over those uh, row by row and you will notice that they go in pairs. So, for example, P and B is a pair, unvoiced, voiced because the way they're formed is exactly the same. Your articulators, your lips, your teeth, your jaw, your tongue move in the same way. The only difference is that for B, we also use our vocal cords. So P and B. And this continues throughout the row. We have T and D. Again, they are formed in the same place in the mouth, but D uses the vocal cords and is louder. Then we have ch and j, k and g. And in the next line we have f and v, th and d. Now those are a little bit difficult to hear. Those are the sounds when we spell th in English. And then next we have s and z, z sh and so here it's quite obvious that one is unvoiced and the next one is voiced. So they go in pairs in the two first rows. The last row is different. We have m, n, n, and then h is a very difficult to hear, h is a very soft sound in English and it's the only unvoiced sound in the final row. And then you have l, r, w and y. And it's very important not to say L, R, W, J because those are letters, the names of letters, but here we do not have letters, we have sounds. I know that the symbol sometimes looks very similar to the letter, but um, it's not the same. Now there's a little bit more to those consonants and you can see this here in this chart. I have colored the first row in green because all those sounds are produced in the same way. If you listen again and you maybe even repeat them with me, p, b, t, d, you can feel that the articulators form some sort of closure. It could be that the lips close and are suddenly opened or that the tongue touches just behind your teeth and then boom, you open it. And that, um, that sudden opening of articulators actually creates this sort of a little mini explosion of um, air in your mouth and that is actually what produces the sound. And so we call all those sounds plosives because of that mini explosion of air that you can hear. Apart from two of the sounds, so p, b, t, d are plosives and then we have ch and j. Those are not quite pure plosives, so these are called affricates but k and g are plosives as well. Now, the sounds in the second row that you can see in sort of this brown color are also all formed in the same way. So if you just listen again, f and v, th, th, s, z, here we do not have a full closure of articulators and by articulators I mean our lips, our tongue, our teeth, our jaw, all of those are your articulators. Now they do not close completely but they come very close and because they come very close what we can then hear suddenly is the air friction between the articulators. It's very obvious in f because your teeth come close to your bottom lip and what we can hear is the air friction and therefore we call all those sounds in the second row fricatives. It's nothing to eat. I know it sounds a bit like a food, but it's actually the name of a whole group of sounds, fricatives. The last row is a little bit different. Here we have different groups of sounds. We've got three nasals in blue, n, n and ng. The third one with the funny little tail that is the sound we form whenever we have the spelling NG or NK. It's an ng right at the back of your throat and you almost get ready to say ng or ng, but you stop just before. 
And then we have h, it's um, the only unvoiced sound in this row. Um, then there's u, a, a lateral. And then we also have r, w, and y. And if you've watched my video on connected speech, you know that these last three consonants, r, w, and y, do have a very special role to play in connected speech. Um, they come into play with liaison when we link between word boundaries. And if this is all news to you, then have a look at my video. I will link to it in the comment section. And that is it. This is the phonemic chart. So I hope it has become a bit clearer to you. I hope that it makes more sense. And I also hope that it will help you to learn all the sounds of English.